how to research and select a product to promote. This video is going to basically just stack on the knowledge that you learned in the previous video where I showed you about the five factors that we need to really think about when we select a product. Things like bestseller ranking, reviews, the price point, whether or not we can private label it or if it's a brand, and also the profit margin. Now if it's a brand certainly that's going to be taken off the table, but you're going to find this training insightful and you need to make a separate list, whether it's on an Excel spreadsheet or a Word document or whatever, so you can document the products that you're researching. You should have at least 10 products that you've researched at bare minimum, but I'd probably go 15 to 20 just to get your feet wet, really comfortable assessing these products and categories. Then once you have those listed, you're going to list the product and you're going to list the corresponding Amazon URL or website. You're going to list how many reviews that product has. You're going to list the bestseller ranking just so you can keep in order. And if you want to, you can also list the top five competitors for each just so you get an idea of where that stacks up. Research is where the money is made. I always say this, whether it's on affiliate marketing or selling on Amazon, the better you do your research, and this is something that you can certainly take your time with, right? There's no hurry, but you want to keep moving forward. You got your initial product list of, let's say, 10 products, and then you'll whittle that down to the top three, and then eventually the top one that you decide. This is the hardest thing for most people, is just choosing one, getting started. You don't have to hit a grand slam from the get-go. In fact, you probably won't. It's unlikely, and I could tell you stories from clients that have, but I could also tell you a lot of stories from clients that just started to break even their first couple months, and then bam, it grew and grew and grew and grew until it became an extra four or five figures every single month. So you got to play the long game. Be consistent. That's going to move mountains. Once we start researching these products too, it's important to understand the difference between highly competitive industries and products versus moderately and minimally competitive products. Now, if you and you and I are searching on Amazon and we see whatever keyword we're searching for and we see the top five products on that listing page have over a thousand reviews, I will just tell you to set that product aside that's not for you at this stage. That is a super competitive market that will take you a long time to break in to get organic sales. And that's not what we want. We want to get you profitable as fast as we can. So we will lean more toward the moderately and the low competitive markets for our first product. And a low competitive market is if you see in the top five reviews, if you see most of them, if not all of them, are below 100 reviews, that's low competitive. That is very interesting. There's opportunity to break in there for that keyword. If you're searching products on Amazon or different categories and you see between 100 and 500 reviews with most of them in the top five uh, search results, well, that's moderately competitive and that could also be commercially viable for you. I'm more inclined to try to find something minimally competitive because that's where we can rank really, really quick. And look, even if it's just a sale, two sales per day on a product, that's going to add up in a major way. Something that I spoke about before in the first intro video of this module as well is I talked about the bestseller ranking and ideally keeping it under 10,000. But, you know, we can fluctuate from there too. You know, if you could find something under 10,000 that's moderately or minimally competitive, awesome. But if you have to go up to 20,000 bestseller ranking and below, by all means, the product will still be making money. And that's the goal, to make a little bit of money because if we can make a little, we can make a lot. Moving on, where can we go to get ideas for products to sell? Well, I'm going to show you how to go to Amazon and search the top 100 products so you can look and see if any of these or related products might be commercially viable or have massive opportunity, but you can go into your local Williams Sonoma store, your local Walmart, and start asking the departments, what do you guys sell the most of here? 
just so you can get an idea of what's moving. And this might vary based on time of year. It could vary based on the market and things at hand in the economy. I like to go more sustainable all year round sales. I'm not really a trend guy, even though there's definitely opportunity to be made in certain trends or in a crisis situation or whatever. There's always opportunity, but I like to go for the sustainable, not just a seasonal Christmas or Halloween or, or temporary thing. So as you search Amazon top 100 products, you'll pull back this listing here. And it's the very first one. So you'll click on it. This will show you the top 100 products on Amazon by category. So if you go down, you can see all these categories to the left hand side. And these are the top 100 products in toys and games, for instance. Well, I just choose a random category here. Let's say kitchen and dining. This is a hot category for sure. Best sellers in kitchen and dining. You can go and see all of these things here potentially choose one to search and you can see the reviews, the actual listing title, and where they rank in this category. So we can scroll down. You could literally choose any one of these things to see what it was just to get an idea. And let's randomly choose, um, let's see here, let's choose this This Thermopro TP03, I just want to show you the listing. First of all, you can see 21,095 reviews. Very, very tough to compete with. Now, we don't know this whole market because we haven't actually searched the keyword. But I would say, what is this? A digital instant red meat thermometer is probably going to be the keyword that you would search and compare. Listen, it's one thing to have a very, very hot product that's moving well. It's another thing to have a hot category. So if we saw five, six different brands that had bestseller rankings under 10,000 for, let's say, a product like this, well, mm, that's very interesting. That means that this whole category is really, really hot. It is super competitive, I can already tell. But this is how the Amazon listing looks. Your title is here. The image is right there. And you can see that you know, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven images. These are all professional, and you will definitely want to get professional images created. Could be on Fiverr. Sometimes the manufacturer themselves have these images. You can see the ratings, questions asked. This is an Amazon's Choice product. And you can see that they also have bullet points. They're unique selling propositions that you can skim, bam, and decide if you really want it. All of these are benefits. Super fast, accurate readout, easy to use, smart design, three years warranty, register. That's you know way to increase your price, certainly. Like if you stack extra bonuses and a larger guarantee or warranty than any of your competitors, you can charge more for your product typically. So they could have added an extra bonus here. For example, a, a free cookbook or two free cookbooks as a bonus, normally valued at $19.97, they will learn this and this and this. That is another way to inflate the uh, value there. But I want to scroll down and show you the bestseller rank here. Nice images. Looks really good. Comparison charts. There we go. Under product information, we go here and we can see that this one is number four in kitchen and dining. Wow. So if you recall, the closer you get to one, the hotter the product is on Amazon and the more it is selling. So this thing's selling like hotcakes. That we know for sure. And we can go down here, look at some of the question answers. I like to do this because I like to see what people like and dislike or what they have questions about. That's very crucial information for you to know how you could potentially improve upon a product. The same thing with the reviews. I mean, I'll look at the one and two star reviews all day long to see if there's a way that we can improve the product. And this is a an objection that you can address in your bullet points all the way up here. And I would imagine this looks like a very skilled seller on Amazon, just from how this listing is laid out. These bullet points, the nice images, and I would imagine that maybe competitors have some issues with, let's say, the design or the 
ease of use or the accuracy, which is why another reason why they probably put these, or maybe it could have been a warranty issue. So this is kind of an overview of what a nice Amazon listing looks like. If I wanted to, I could go and search right now on Amazon, digital instant red meat thermometer. And when I search, Amazon does give me other options as well here below, which they essentially give you the keyword research. I would imagine red meat thermometer might be the short tail keyword here. So if I put that in, let's see what they give me. Digital meat thermometer instant read. But I'll go to the original search and see what pulls up. Scroll down here, have the listings and the best selling products sponsored 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 so we go directly after the sponsored you can see here a sponsored with 10 reviews this, you know, this person's trying to break in 48 reviews the same thing so these might be relatively new products but they're getting sales because Amazon ads in the short term you might need to buy your rank and in fact this is what I recommend is using Amazon ads. If you're watching this right now, you're probably a doctor, professional, entrepreneur. Maybe you have your own business and you've got some discretionary income that you can apply toward this business. A lot of sellers don't because they're bootstrapping starting up so they don't have the opportunity to run Amazon ads for targeted search traffic. Remember, Amazon is a buyer's network. People are here to spend money. So you want to capitalize on that. Now, this first listing organically has 5,000 reviews, 21,000, 1,700. So given the criteria that I talked to you before about in the first five listings, organic listings, we've got three of them that have over 1,000 reviews. Now, yes, this has 241, 405, and there are people that have broken in with Amazon ads in 48 and 10. Let's, let's keep going down see what we see 37 this is a very competitive market so personally would I make this my first product absolutely not this is very very competitive and I know it would take a little bit of time probably months and months to be able to start ranking on the first page at all and if we did we need to get it high enough so where people actually see it so let's type in another product right now so let's go for example handheld milk frother if I search this product and scroll down I can see that just below the sponsored advertising you can see here sponsored right there uh, Zule this is a name brand I'm assuming power licks 11,000 reviews 13,000 7,000 reviews there so let's scroll down again. 789, and there's one with 50. That's interesting to me. But you are competing with thousands and thousands and thousands of reviews. Now, I would imagine this particular listing right here, even though the review it, it doesn't look good, I'd imagine they're getting some sales from being so high organically. That's interesting. But, uh, and here's one with 21 as well. Here's one with 7. Hmm. But you're competing against thousands and thousands. So if you ask me, would I do this for my first product if I was totally new to Amazon? I don't think that I would because I know we could find minimal and moderately competitive products that might have a few hundred reviews and within the first five might have 30 or 40 or 7 like you saw all the way down right there. So that's something to think about. Just for giggles, let me go ahead and just check out this listing. I can see in a similar fashion, you know, of course, Milk Frother Handheld is at the beginning of the title and description on Amazon. Just like on a YouTube video, the closer your keywords are to the beginning, your money keywords of the listing, the better that is for the ranking. So we definitely want to maximize our keywords in the title, have the money keyword really, really close to the beginning there. And then beautiful images, they went to probably Fiverr or somewhere else to get these images created. Maybe the manufacturer helped them. And 
um, looks like this one has many, many colors. We talked before about variations and how with variations, I would not start a product with 16 different variations because that will spread you very thin and you won't know what variation is going to be the breadwinner or the money maker. So I, I would stay away from that. But we look at the bullet points again. Boom. This is very compelling. I already know this seller is been doing this for a long time because these are very compelling bullet points. No hassle. Happiness guarantee. Scroll all the way down. Nice images throughout the listing. Little comparison. And then we go down to best sellers rank 21 in home and kitchen hmm. interesting two in milk frothers these are subcategories mind you four in kitchen small appliances i'm not so much as worried about the small categories as i am the larger ones because if you rank again if the best seller ranking is under 10,000 for instance or under 20,000 uh that that's great First of all, you know, we know there's some money to be made. The lower it is, like 21, especially in a competitive market like home and kitchen, that's making a lot of money. In terms of how many units it's moving per day, we don't know, and there are tools that we can use to assess that and estimate later on, but we know it's moving a lot of units. This could be easily 20, 30, 50 units per day, very, very easily, because they're ranked so high and they've got so many rankings. And then again, I would go down, look, and see, check the reviews, look at the negative reviews, see why people are asking questions, what questions are they asking, and potentially, is there a way to improve this product if I was thinking about it. Now, let's do one more search to give you another idea. Um, how about pet urn, and pet urns for dog ashes, okay? People are rationally passionate about pets. This is a popular industry. Lots of opportunity here, as, as with many on Amazon. But let's check it out. So if I scroll down on the first page, uh, let's look at the sponsored. This is sponsored right here, I can see. 44 reviews. And this one has 826. 10 reviews. 101 reviews. Hmm. And we got 1500, 918, 462 editorial recommendations. We get down here, there's 58. There's 16 reviews, 209. And of course, we have one with thousands. So, what would I classify this as? Now, because I see 16 reviews here and one with 10 reviews that high atop, and this is not a sponsored listing, it doesn't say sponsored on top of it. That's fascinating to me because then I'm starting to think, well, this is probably, even though there's there are reviews that are under 10, I would put this probably in the moderately competitive category because there are with hundreds in here too. So this could be commercially viable and it might not take us that long to rank on the first page. Two reviews, five reviews, mm, very interesting. Very interesting, 24. Now, me with an extensive marketing background i see a massive opportunity here but you if you're just starting out even if you're low tech this should say ah this could be an opportunity right here now i'm not going to tell however hundreds of you are in this group when you're watching this to all sell patterns but this is an opportunity this is just one example right i would go with something that you're passionate about or that's a hobby or interest related potentially, because you're gonna know that industry really well. And if you use this search criteria that I've laid out in this um, tutorial, you're going to be able to assess much, much easier and figure out where the opportunity lies. The hardest thing for you will just be choosing one thing to go with, because as you do your first 10 or your first 20 products, you'll see opportunity in many ones and you'll get excited. I would suggest that you want to plant roots deep in one industry. So if I was going to go into the pet industry, and this is some this is some thinking that you have to do beforehand, we're going to set up a, a company. And if we're going to set up a company, if our company was titled Pet Supplies International, well, it would make sense that everything we sold would be pet related. You're not just going to sell a handheld milk frother 
with a company name, Pet Supplies International. Does that make sense? I hope so, yeah, because want, you want to have brand congruency there. Eventually, you'd like to build a big brand having multiple products in uh, for, you know, for whatever this is. So, um, uh, in your industry, I'm sorry. So, you'd like to have this. However, you just need to do your own research. Here's a question for you. Does this particular product fit our five criteria that we talked about in the previous video? Well, in terms of the reviews, I would say yes. In terms of bestseller rank, well, let's check the top one out. For example, let's let's check this one out. This has 826 reviews. See where it is. Scroll all the way down. We can see here that 19,760 in home and kitchen, two decorative urns. So under 20,000. It's not 21 like we talked about before, but it's 20,000 roughly. So this is definitely moving. And common sense will tell you that people are rationally passionate about their pets. And I know many people that actually have pet urns that I can think of off the top of my head. So you know that people buy this stuff, right? This is one of those products that definitely has value that way. Now, the third thing that we talked about was the price. Does it meet our price guidelines? Well, it's between $20 and $70, most definitely, and it fluctuates. The thing you want to ask yourself is, what's the difference, though, in the price? Why are they charging $36 versus $19.95? Is it the material? Is it the size? These are things you have to think of. Or are they offering extras? Is there a higher guarantee? Is there some type of bonus in the listing that they would get if they purchase this that they wouldn't get? All those things factor into the price. 14, 21. You but you can see it's across the board. $74. Now this looks like it's definitely uh, a memorial gallery gallery custom wood personalized engraved pet urn, okay? So personalized is definitely going to command a higher value. 15, 29, 44, 49. So you know, that's um that's very interesting because it's a it's a big fluctuation in the price. So if you just came out right of, right out of the gate and you were able to price this at 24.95 for instance, which seems almost mid-range for what we're looking here, well, that could potentially work especially if you deliver value and show the value in the listing. This is where you need to use also the profit calculator that we spoke about before. And you would go to Alibaba and search for different patterns and figure out what, you know, uh, based on the quantity you order, the minimum order quantity, which ones specifically uh, do you like. And you're going to get samples sent to you. We'll go over that on a separate video. But you'll get samples that are sent to you. And then um, you will, based on what you see on Alibaba, the pricing, you'll go to the profit calculator and do some general estimates is it within the 30 to 60% profit margin range? I would imagine it would be, unless this thing is like a you know piece of lead <laughs> or a brick, right? If the weight is really, really high, that's going to increase your shipping cost. But this is how you do your research. Again, you should have at least 10 products that you have on an Excel spreadsheet or a Word document where you're listing the reviews, the bestseller ranking, the URL, the website address of where you're searching if you want to or the actual product and organize this so you can easily look through and figure out where the best opportunity may lie for you. So hopefully you found some value out of this video tutorial. I will see you on the next one.